Look up. Beyond the sun and clouds, an invisible network orbits above us. Satellites, quietly shaping our world. These machines are the backbone of our digital lives, connecting, guiding, and synchronizing us in a cosmic ballet. Your morning routine, alarm, weather updates, global news, relies on signals from space. We've woven this technology so deeply into our lives, we barely notice it. Satellites are as essential as electricity or water, powering commerce, security, and daily convenience. Every tap to pay, every streamed movie, is a silent handshake with space. This partnership has shrunk our world and made the impossible routine. But what happens when this network becomes a battleground? For decades, GPS reigned supreme, a gift to the world, but with strings attached. Now, new constellations are rising, challenging the old order. The story of satellite navigation is about more than technology. It's about power, rivalry, and the future of our connected world. Let's explore how these silent partners in the sky secretly run our world. GPS isn't just for directions, it's the universal clock and ruler of our civilization. Every financial transaction, stock trade, and bank transfer depends on GPS's atomic clocks for precise timing. Power grids rely on it to keep the lights on. A tiny error could cause massive blackouts. GPS guides tractors for precision farming, boosting yields and saving resources. In disasters, first responders use GPS to find and save lives. Your emergency call? GPS pinpoints your location instantly. From shipping to cell towers, satellite navigation keeps the world running smoothly. We've built our world on this invisible foundation, assuming it will always be there. If it vanished, modern life would grind to a halt within hours. GPS is more than a map, it's the heartbeat of the planet. GPS was born from Cold War rivalry, sparked by the launch of Sputnik in 1957. Scientists realized they could track satellites using the Doppler effect, and soon wondered if satellites could help us find our own position on Earth. The US military saw the potential precise navigation for missiles, ships, and troops. In the 1970s, the Navstar GPS project began, aiming for global coverage with 24 satellites. Initially, GPS was a military tool. Civilians got a degraded signal. The Pentagon kept the best accuracy for itself, fearing adversaries might use it. Everything changed after the 1983 Korean Airlines tragedy, when a civilian plane was shot down after a navigation error. President Reagan promised GPS would be available to all once complete. In 2000, the U.S. removed signal degradation, giving the world full access. What began as a weapon became a global utility. GPS transformed from a tool of war to a gift of American technology. The world was now connected by a constellation of satellites. But this gift came with new questions about power and dependence. With GPS, the U.S. became the world's timekeeper and map maker. Every nation, company, and individual depended on signals from American military satellites. This monopoly gave the U.S. subtle but immense global power. The military's reliance was total. Smart bombs, troop movements, and global operations all depended on GPS. In conflict, the U.S. could deny GPS access to adversaries, keeping the advantage. Beyond war, GPS fostered goodwill and deepened global dependence. Industries worldwide built on the assumption that GPS would always be there. But this dependence made other nations uneasy. What if the U.S. cut off access during a crisis? The power to deny GPS was the power to cripple economies and militaries. This vulnerability sparked a new space race. To be truly sovereign nations realized they needed their own stars. The American monopoly planted the seeds for global competition in the sky. America's GPS dominance was both a gift and a source of anxiety for other nations. Relying on a rival system was a strategic risk one that China, Russia, and others couldn't accept. Incidents in the 1990s, where GPS signals were disrupted, highlighted this vulnerability. For China, true sovereignty meant technological independence in the sky. Russia built GLONASS. Iran sought alternatives, fearing sanctions and signal denial. The stakes weren't just military. Modern economies and infrastructure depended on reliable navigation. The motivation was clear, secure military freedom and economic stability. Building a homegrown system was a monumental task, but dependence was not an option. The race for independent navigation was about security, autonomy, and global power. China's Beidou project began in the 1990s, 
driven by the need for independence from GPS. Starting small, Beidou 1 covered only China, but it was a crucial first step. The project became a symbol of national pride and technological ambition. China briefly joined Europe's Galileo project, but soon doubled down on its own system. Beidou 2 expanded coverage to Asia Pacific by 2012. The final phase, Beidou 3, achieved global reach in 2020. With over 35 satellites, Beidou now rivals and even surpasses GPS in size. It's a testament to China's strategic planning and technological mobilization. The Big Dipper, once a guide for ancient navigators, is now China's 21st century compass. Beidou marks China's arrival as a global space power. With Beidou fully operational, the world has a real alternative to GPS. Both systems offer global positioning, but Beidou's hybrid constellation, mixing different satellite orbits, gives it unique strengths, especially in Asia. Beidou's geostationary satellites provide stronger signals in urban canyons, often outperforming GPS in dense cities. A standout feature. Beidou's two-way messaging lets users send short texts via satellite, a lifeline for remote areas. For logistics, exploration, and emergencies, this is a game-changer. In terms of accuracy, both systems are now comparable, with upgrades driving constant innovation. GPS remains the global standard, but Beidou's larger network and unique features make it a formidable rival. The choice is no longer GPS or nothing, it's a competition between two powerful systems. This rivalry is pushing both to new heights. The world now navigates by more than one set of stars. Beidou's rise is reshaping global alliances. China's Belt and Road Initiative is building a digital silk road with Beidou at its core. Countries like Pakistan have adopted Beidou, reducing reliance on GPS and deepening ties with China. In the Middle East, even traditional US allies are hedging their bets, signing agreements for Beidou cooperation. For nations like Iran, Beidou offers escape from US technological dominance. Adopting Beidou is both a technical and political choice, signaling a shift toward a multipolar world. As more countries integrate Beidou, China's influence grows. Technical support, ground stations, and Beidou-compatible products create a powerful network effect. The sky's new constellations are redrawing the map of global power. The era of a single global navigation system is over. The sky is now crowded, GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, Galileo, all competing for influence. This competition brings innovation devices can use multiple systems for faster, more reliable positioning. If one system fails, another can fill the gap, making navigation more resilient. But the stakes are higher. These systems are now targets in any conflict. Jamming and spoofing can disrupt navigation, with risks for both military and civilian infrastructure. Imagine ports thrown into chaos or financial markets disrupted by false signals. Our dependence on satellite navigation has created new vulnerabilities. Securing these signals is now a matter of national security. Satellite navigation began as a military tool, became a global utility, and has returned as a battleground for power. It's about more than convenience. It's about control and influence. The contest for the sky will shape our future in ways we're only beginning to understand. The silent dance of satellites is now a high-stakes game for the world.